In this instructional video, I'd like to show you how to use DigiLT, our first numeric skydiving altimeter. This video will provide you with pretty much everything you need to know about how to use the device and how it interfaces with FDS Logbook, for which we've created a separate instructional video. Let's first take a look at how DigiLT is inserted into the mount. Now the altimeter will come already mounted, but we'll be adding additional options in the future, so it's not a bad idea to look at how this is put together. Basically place the LT into the mount, making sure that the USB port is on the correct side on the bottom here. Then take the wrist strap fuzzy side toward the altimeter, and you're going to want to situate it up as high as it goes unless you have a very large wrist. This plastic piece goes to the top, and then you're going to want to center it too. Then place the plate over it and start to tighten these Phillips screws down. Make sure you have the jumper oriented head down. You can sort of finish up your work centering it if you leave the screws all a bit loose and then tighten them alternating corners like this. You don't have to tighten the hell out of it. I should mention here that there's an option to turn the LCD upside down, so if you prefer that setup you could simply orient the strap in the other direction. We'll put out some new videos when we come up with different mounting options, so keep an eye out for those. For wingsuiting, I'd actually recommend using the altimeter without the mount and instead using something like a digi pouch, which are available from Shooting Star. Okay, let's take a look at how to use the altimeter. You can press any button to wake it up. If it doesn't wake up, charge it by connecting a charging cable to it. Battery life depends not only on how much you jump, but also what kind of use you make of the LEDs. To put it simply, the more LEDs that are on, the quicker the battery gets drained. We find that we're getting approximately three to six weeks of battery life with normal jumping on this original firmware. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at some of its basic functionality and navigation before taking a look at the app. As mentioned before, to wake up the altimeter, tap either of the white buttons. DigiLT is always on, so if you start to ascend in an aircraft, it'll actually wake up for you. But if you want to wake it up yourself, tap a button. If you tap the top button again, you'll get to a general info page that shows you the date and time, your altitude, climb rate, current preset, your next jump number, the current temperature, and battery status. If you tap that button again, you'll enter a simple logbook that shows some info on your jumps, and here you can go back through all the jumps that are currently on your altimeter. When you sync these to FDS logbook, they'll be deleted and disappear from the altimeter. You can log hundreds of jumps before needing to sync to FDS logbook, but it's recommended to sync more often. We'll touch on this again later. Use the bottom button to navigate backwards back to the home altitude screen. These top and bottom buttons navigate forward and backwards between the screens mentioned here. Now as we'll see in the FDS Altis app, you can name and set up to five presets. These are selected by holding down the buttons instead of the short taps for navigation. Wake up the altimeter, and then hold down the top button to go to the next preset. If you want to go back, hold down the bottom button. There's one more thing you can do with these buttons, and that brings us to the FDS Altis app and how to set and customize the altimeter. FDS Altis is available in both the App Store for iOS and Google Play for Android. To connect, first download the app and open it, agreeing to the terms of service. If you created an FDS logbook account, you can sign in, otherwise you can just skip this step. DigiLT has a mostly aluminum case, so it's best to keep the device relatively close to your mobile device when you're doing this setting. Hold down both buttons and the altimeter will be put into a Bluetooth pairing mode with the blue LED flashing. Press the connect and sync button on the app and select your device. It'll be listed along with its 5 digit serial number in the list. It can take between 5 to 10 seconds to download all the data from your altimeter. The blue light on DigiLT should turn solid when you connect to your altimeter. Once data has been downloaded, you'll see your altimeter and its serial number, in this case K5VHR, at the top of the screen and menu buttons, settings at the top, data syncing in the middle, and info at the bottom. The middle button will be grayed out and unavailable if you're not signed into FDS Logbook. You can take a look at the FDS Logbook instructional video to see how to create an account. Let's take a look at info at the very bottom first. Very simple. You've got your serial number, battery status, the number of jumps since the flash was last formatted, in the rare case that it needs to be, which occurs automatically, and your firmware number. Let's now skip to the top and take a look at how to set to GLT. Click on settings and you'll see six menu options. The main settings are at the top, which pertain to all five presets, and then you have the five presets. By default, they'll simply be named presets 1 through 5, but you can name them all as we'll see. We already talked about how to select the presets on the altimeter itself. So let's actually take a look in detail at these main settings at the top. Now it's important to remember that these settings apply to all the presets. 
At the top main settings, you can see that you can title the five presets here. The names can have a maximum of eight characters, so you may need to abbreviate. Okay, moving on below this, you can choose whether or not the altimeter logs jumps for syncing to FDS Logbook. If you aren't using FDS Logbook, or you loan your altimeter to another jumper, you might simply turn this feature off. We calculated that the average jumper could get approximately a thousand jumps on DigiAlt before needing to sync to FDS Logbook, but we'd recommend syncing more often in order to avoid any errors that might occur, and because FDS Logbook has a bunch of other interesting features like adding media, and tagging friends, and things like that. So it's still generally good practice to log often. Okay, below this you can set DigiLT to a metric mode as usual, and below that you can also set the altimeter to a travel mode, which disables the altimeter from reacting to changes in altitude, and can also be simply used as a low battery mode if one's traveling through hills or by aircraft. It's important to realize that the altimeter will not function on a skydive when it's in travel mode. There's actually no way to turn DigiLT off. It's an always on design, which is actually pretty nice. But below this, you can see that you can invert the display, as we mentioned before, if you prefer that orientation. Moving on, at the very bottom, you can set your next jump number. This is good to do right when you get your altimeter, or else you'll end up having to shift your numbers after the fact in FDS Logbook, which you can, of course, do under Administration. Okay, those are the main settings that apply to all the presets that you make. And, like I said before, you can create up to five presets. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first preset. Click on it and you'll see two options, general and light bar. Let's take a look at general first. You can see here that for each preset you can change the landing zone offset. This is useful for jumpers landing at a different altitude from takeoff. If my landing area is higher than my takeoff altitude, I put a positive number in here. If my landing area is lower, I enter a negative number. The app will confirm in words what you have indicated in order to avoid any confusion. One of the challenges of making skydiving altimeters is recognizing the different phases of the skydive, ascent, freefall, and canopy. To give you an example, if someone's flying a very large wingsuit and a small canopy, that would make it particularly difficult. To overcome this challenge, we've made it so you can set a custom freefall threshold on DigiLT. If you wingsuit, for example, you could put in a number like 40 miles per hour, and this would ensure that you would see freefall alerts on the light bar if you're falling at a rate lower than the standard 80 miles per hour freefall threshold. Now you have to know the approximate fall rate you have in your wingsuit and enter a number lower than that fall rate here. The nice thing is, if you don't know your fall rate, you can get a very good idea of it by logging a few jumps in FDS Logbook. A swooper might actually increase the freefall threshold to 100 miles per hour or so in order to avoid setting off freefall alerts under an extremely high wing loading. The ability to shut off all freefall alerts below a certain altitude makes it so that you can be certain to only see canopy alerts below that altitude. If I, for example, enter 2,000 feet here, then I can be certain that only canopy alerts will be seen below 2,000 feet. So those are some useful features for wingsuiters and swoopers. Okay, below this you can adjust the LED brightness for your light bar, which can be useful for jumping in low light conditions as not to blind oneself and others in the sky. Finally, below this you can see 15 different toggle buttons that indicate what additional information besides altitude the altimeter should indicate during the three phases of the skydive. You can have it display the date and time, your ascent or descent rate, the next jump number, preset name, and temperature. These will appear at the bottom of the screen during a jump. If you turn them all off, it will center the altitude displayed during that phase of a jump. Okay, let's take a look at how to set the light bar on DigiLT and what kind of alerts we have. There's actually a dedicated web page that shows all of the alerts and effects that are available on ColorLT2 and DigiLT. This web page can be useful for selecting your alerts and seeing what all is available. Go ahead and click on light bar and you'll again see three tabs at the bottom. Alerts break down into two categories, plain old alerts and effects. In a standard alert, all the LEDs on DigiLT are the same color, regardless of what they might be doing. They could be flashing, scrolling, fading, etc. They could even be blending through the rainbow, but they are all the same color at the same time. Effects are all those alerts where the LEDs are either different colors or where they are white. Here are some examples. The nice thing is you can mix and match any alerts and effects you want and use as many as you want as well. I'd again stress though that since we fall at around 200 feet per second, that you at least want most alerts to last 500 feet in free fall and 50 feet under canopy at the very minimum if you're not wingsuiting. To enter an alert, first select the alert you want. I could, for example, say I wanted the altimeter to blend from this color 
to this color. And I want it to flash slowly as well instead of staying lit. Then I simply enter the altitude I want it to occur at and press insert. You can see we've got defaults at 1,000 and 12,000 feet on this first preset and I can click on them to preview them or swipe left on iOS to delete or hold down on Android. Simply find the alert or effect you want, enter the altitude and press insert. You should see it appear in the list as such. Freefall alerts on ascent last 4 seconds. Ok, moving to freefall and canopy, it's similar but you're basically setting an altitude range over which you'd like to see an alert or effect. You can see defaults from 13,000 down to 6,000 blending through the colors of the rainbow over that altitude range. And then we have America at 6,000 feet all the way down to 3,000 feet, at which point the light flashes red. Four particularly unique alerts, count up, count down, fade in, and fade out, are altitude dependent. This means if I do something like this, let's first take everything out, let's set it to blend from blue to red as before, but this time, let's have it count up according to altitude down to 3,000 feet. Since I have 10 LEDs and they're exactly 10,000 feet between 13,000 and 3,000 feet, each LED will then represent 1,000 feet as I fall in addition to the blending. Count down does the opposite, and fade in or fade out would fade in or out over that altitude range you indicated. If this interface is so flexible, I could insert an alert in the middle of this from 6,000 to 5,500 feet, as such. It will of course split the count up into two alerts, but this sort of inserts an effect into this alert. Any overlaps are taken care of by the software, but be sure to preview your result by tapping through your alerts. Canopy alerts function in exactly the same way, and you can see we've got three from 1,000 to 600, 600 to 300, and 300 to 50 feet. Pretty standard stuff. Now we have a separate instructional video for FDS Logbook, but let's just take a look at how to sync data from the altimeter to FDS LT's app. You'll need a Wi-Fi connection in order to upload jumps to FDS Logbook. Click on data syncing and you'll first seek your current logbook settings from FDS Logbook. These are the exact same settings that you see under administration in FDS Logbook, and if you change the values here, they will change in the logbook as well. We decided to make this the one thing in the logbook that could be accessed directly from the FDS LTS app, whereas everything else is pretty much decoupled, meaning that the FDS LTS app and FDS logbook are really entirely separate systems. If you click on the data syncing tab at the bottom, you'll see where you can upload data to FDS logbook. At the very top, it'll show you how many data files exist on your altimeter currently. If your altimeter is new, this should read zero. In my case, I have nine jump files on there. You can go ahead and press download files from altimeter and the process of transferring the files from the altimeter onto your mobile device begins. You can cancel the process in the middle if you want to without losing any data. Once the data is on your mobile device, the data is erased from your altimeter and it's ready for transfer from your mobile device to FDS logbook. You can upload files individually by pressing the button next to the file or you can do what I like to do, just press load, upload all files and sit back while they upload. You can actually see them appearing in your logbook as you do this. Sometimes it takes a few seconds before they appear. After this, you can edit your entries and add any additional information or media that you want to the jumps. As mentioned before, we have a whole other instructional video on FDS Logbook, so if you're going to be using the logging capabilities of DigiLT, you're definitely going to want to take a look at that. This is how data from DigiLT looks in FDS Logbook. When you're finished using the app, you actually have three options. You can actually just let the Bluetooth time out automatically after two minutes, or you can press and hold one of the buttons to turn it off again, or you can press disconnect on the app and it'll take care of that for you. Really user-friendly and avoids any possibility of accidentally leaving the Bluetooth on. If you ever have any difficulty using the altimeter and that you charge it but you're not able to connect to it, try using the reset button, which is located between the two white buttons. Simply depress the button by inserting a paper clip into the hole as such. It's a good idea to check your settings after doing this, as if the file system has been corrupted, which shouldn't generally happen, it'll be automatically reformatted. This is also the button that's used to do firmware updates on the altimeter. Let's take a look at how to do that. To carry out a firmware update, plug your altimeter into your computer using a micro USB cable that can be used for data transfer. These types of cables are really everywhere because they're used by Android phones. We also sell both the charging and data cables very cheap shipped on our website. So plug your altimeter in and double click the reset button with a paper clip. 
You should see a drive appear on your computer called Featherboot. If you click on the drive, you'll see a file called current.uf2. Simply drag your new current.uf2 from a different location onto the drive and you'll have overwritten the firmware. It's a good idea to then connect your altimeter with the FDS Alties app and check that your settings are in place and that the new firmware version is shown under info. In terms of taking care of the altimeter, DigiAlti is an electronic device with a lithium polymer battery, so it's not a good idea, for example, to leave it in a hot car or something like that. Also, it isn't waterproof because it contains a barometric pressure sensor, and if air can get in, then water can get in at some depth as well. That being said, it was manufactured to be extremely water resistant, using water resistant hardware and a filter on the pressure sensor. So taking a quick dip in the pond or a light rain shouldn't generally be a problem, but it's best to avoid moisture. And that's pretty much what you need to know about using DigiLT. If you're going to be using the logging functions, you're definitely going to want to check out the instructional video for FDS Logbook as well. Stay safe up there.